and it's very close. And um, oh, sorry, I, I forgot what I was talking about. Sorry. <laughs> Or something before that I was trying to say. I can only remember bits. no recollection of um, a few hours before or after well, I've got no recollection of after but I can only remember to a certain time of the day where the accident didn't happen until hours later She got all dressed up she looked lovely I remember being with my friend um, it was Christmas time um, and we were um, in Birmingham city centre. It must have been about half two in the morning, I got a phone call, um, obviously from a number that I didn't recognise. Um, and it was the nurse at the hospital. She just said, is this Abby? I said, yes, she said, you need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Your mum's had a fall. Journey to A&E, she was in a neck brace, totally, you know, knocked out, uh, oblivious to the world. I was left on my own with that, and then she suddenly opened her eyes. She was saying, Kieran, help me, help me. And I, was, I froze and didn't know what to do. And then she started retching and trying to pull the neck brace off. And then she got, started getting sick. I was just that helpless. They said she's fractured her skull and there's a hole in her skull and she's bleeding from it and the bleed are moving. When you bleed on your brain, it just your brain tries to restart itself. So it goes into a sense of hibernation. I felt like I was in a daze from the moment it happened to she was released. Like I didn't really register what was actually going on. Like quite dreamlike. We know from the friend that she was with that she fell down the stairs and hit her head on a metal pipe. Um, Mum's got this photo shoot portrait in the living room and it was quite unnerving to me to be looking at this portrait knowing that her skull had been, you know, near crushed to pieces. And I just found it quite hard to remove this image from my head. I started to think about their mother's head that was just being completely crushed in a fall. I struggled with that for a while. I've got very slight remembrance of the day I was discharged from hospital. She was like an unrecognisable person. She was like looking at us with like glass eyes, ignoring us, you know, she didn't know who we were. And as each day went further, I thought, well, this could be it. I can remember um, being wheeled into a shower room. She couldn't, you know, take a shower or bath without help with Abby. She was sensitive, she was angry, uh, depressed. Um, and it was just a sense of uh, not even understanding what had, has even happened to her. I sleep. I was always asleep. She was in this constant pain. There's nothing we could do to help her. 
Um, she was forgetful, she was repeating things. For a good few days, she didn't know who me and Kieran were. Um, she was so slow in her movements. She couldn't really string a sentence together. At first, everything was all blurred. And uh, it still happens where I can read something, but I read it wrong. What's your address and what's your name? And each time she said something different, so she couldn't remember her own name. And, and still now, her memory isn't great. She can't remember lots of things that she'll, she'll be talking to you. And then halfway through a sentence, she doesn't know what she was talking about. One of the hardest parts was the taste because uh, I wasn't eating very well at the beginning. I didn't realise at first, actually, I'm eating this, but I don't know what it tastes like. It dawned on me eventually, I can't smell and I can't taste anything. As the weeks and months started to pass by, obviously because I had no recollection of speaking with any doctors or anybody related, I just, I, I obviously started to realise, yes, I'd had an accident, yes, I'd fallen, um, yes, I fractured my skull, but I was going to get better. We were basically told to prepare for the worst. It's just hard to watch, you know, someone try and reclaim something which is ultimately unobtainable. We had no clue how to care for her whatsoever. So it kind of, turned, kind of turned from relief into anger. So why have we been left? on our own with a woman who is unrecognisable to us. You know, she went out and she was one person and then there's a near enough stranger in the home. Sometimes you get angry and I, I, get, I can get more angry now than what I ever used to. It's, it starts off like a small thing, but it gets bigger and bigger because it's like a big circle, a vicious circle because um, so I get quite irritated when, and she, she's snappy and argumentative with me. I just forget and just argue back. As their mum, why can't I? Be what I want to be to them. Why, you know, why do I have to ask them to do help me do simple tasks? And that's what gets. That's why I get angry. Um, I have a tendency to self-medicate, especially with alcohol, and that's actually brought a sense of guilt since the accident. Because instead of standing up and being the strong sibling or the strong son. I've been trying to deal with it like a bit of like a, a coward to forget things. I was sort of caring for her like she cared for me as a mum. When she first came out of hospital, so she couldn't dress herself, she couldn't bath herself, she couldn't cook. You don't expect your daughter to do that for you. Um, you know, at my time in life anyway, when you're older maybe. We had to sort of put a bit of a front on um, and try and encourage her really to, to try and accept that she's probably not going to be the same ever again as what she used to be. You still keep having flash, flashbacks of the, the old, you know, as I call it, the old you. There's so many days where I, I, I'm, I'm like, really low and thinking, this is just an existence. What, you know, what kind of an existence is this? On her worst day, 
say she could, if she not get, get out of bed at all. I can not, don't get dressed. And I'm just in, on my own, just want to be on my own. It's like I'm, I mean, because I, I can moan about isolation, but sometimes I know that I, I, I isolate myself. But that's the way I have to, that's the way I, I have to deal with the way I'm feeling. Her personality has changed. She's more sensitive, somewhat more obsessed with social media and people's views on her than she ever was before. It's never going to go away. She's never going to be better. Because people don't understand. People think if you get trauma, like my trauma was the back of my head. So some people think it was just the back of my head that's been damaged. Well, actually, no. Because that's where the jelly brain comes in, because the, the brain is like a piece of jelly that shakes. All the different lobes have been affected. Other people don't really see what's wrong with her. Because you can't see it. You know. She looks completely normal and it's all happened internally. The condition, um, the depression, she feels like she always needs to justify herself. It's hard to accept this is a new life. I want to be able to do what I used to be able to do before, but I I can't do those things anymore. I'm a lot better now than what I used to be, but I can still, I can still see that the road is still quite long. That I've got to walk, but I'm walking it anyway. <laughs>